We've we been doing it. It's, it's going to be Jeff doing it the same way. We'll okay. try it on Sunday. Brother Will going to do it. Right. Yeah. Will. All right. Thank you. Praise God. All right. Let's, if you can all stand, if you can't stand, that's okay. Let's go before the Lord in prayer and open up. Invite Lord, the Lord here tonight, oh God. We're so thankful, Lord, for this wonderful day you've given us, oh God. We cannot make it without a day, Lord. We know that there's just some better than others, oh God. We're so thankful, Lord. We're thankful for all your blessings, oh God. And we ask if you fill this place tonight, oh God, with your mighty presence, oh Lord. Touch each and every one here tonight, Lord. The knows and listening by web, oh God. Touch them, Lord, in the ways they need to be touched, oh God. Take away the things in life, Lord, that we don't need, oh God, that we shouldn't have, oh Lord, and give us, Lord, the things we do need to make it through these troubled times, oh God, that we live in, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you be with us, Lord, and, and be with us and, and anoint us, oh God. Open our ears and our hearts and the understanding, Lord, of your truth, oh God, and have us to apply it in our life as it becomes applicable. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Sister April is going to lead us in song and worship. Brother Tim is going to play the piano. Yeah. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to do it all. Our God is awesome.
about a burning bush experience. You know, you get a burning bush experience in your life as like Moses did. It's something you'll never, I said it's something you'll never forget. That's right. As long as you live and breathe here on planet Earth, you'll never forget it. Praise God. A burning bush experience. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a bush lighting up and burning. But a, a strong experience in the Lord. And so I want to call it a burning bush experience. As like Moses had. Praise God. I'm going to go before the Lord one more time real quick and pray. Lord, oh God, anoint my lips, oh God. Hide me behind your cross, oh Lord. Let it be all about you tonight, oh God. As the book says in John 3.30, you must increase and I must decrease, oh Lord. Have your way in the sanctuary tonight, oh God. Jesus, touch our ears, open our hearts and minds to the understanding, oh God, of your words. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Praise God. If we could turn in your Bibles, to the book of Exodus 3, verses 1 through 9. Exodus 3, 1 through 9. Or oh, you can read it on the screen, on the wall. I'm going to read quickly. I've got quite a few verses. I normally say I'm going to just keep you, you know, I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Tonight might be a long night. Is that okay? All right. <laughs> Praise God. We'll see. I don't think. Anyway. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of the Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, well, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses. Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, God said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. I want to sing that song tonight. Mm. Yeah, praise God. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard thy cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I'm telling you, he hears your cries tonight, Monday night, in prayer meeting. He hears your cries at night when you lay down on the bed. He hears your cries at three in the morning if you get up like I do. And he hears your cries every time you cry out to him. He hears you. Trust me. Praise God. And he knows your sorrows. Mm. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and enlarge unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Paralites, Parasites, <laughs> and the Habitites, and the Jebus, Jebutes, Jebusites. I'm sorry, praise God. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression. I said, you feel oppressed tonight? Mm. Almost depressed sometimes? 
He, he knows. He sees it. Praise God. Where would the Egyptians oppress them? Praise God. I want to talk to you tonight about a burning bush experience as like Moses had. Can you imagine that being on the mountain, the mountain of God, and all of a sudden you have a bush light up in front of you. And all of a sudden it speaks to you when you take a look at it and say, hmm, what's going on with that? I wonder why it's not burning up. But it's burning. And all of a sudden a voice comes out of it calls your name two times, not just once, and instructs you on what's going on. Straight from God Almighty. Can you imagine having an experience like that? Can you imagine that? He talks to you just like you would a friend. Moses, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. I'm sorry, you can't come any further. Stay right where you are. Take off them nasty, dirty shoes. Mm. This is holy ground. Praise God. An experience that Moses never forgot, I guarantee you. When Jesus baptized you in the Holy Ghost, and are baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, you'll never forget it. How many here have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Yes. Huh? Yes. Well, when you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you've been baptized in fire as well. I'm going to prove that to you tonight. Let's take a look at John. Praise God. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and he is a Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You have to have a balance there. Both spirit and truth. Not just one or the other. You're in the right place tonight, folks. Yes. you got both. Worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. A holy spirit. That makes him the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Let's take a look at Hebrews 12 and 29 real quick. Hebrews 12 and 29. For our God is a consuming fire. You see that? Yes. God is a spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Ghost. And he's a consuming fire. Praise God. That's how he could burn that bush in his holy fire and it not burn. Praise God. I'm talking about an unquenchable fire. Just like the burning bush that Moses experienced. It is a holy fire that cannot be quenched. And when you receive the Holy Ghost and fire, there's no devil in hell that can put it out. Right. They tried it in Jerusalem in the very beginning, and it didn't work. Praise God. It just spread. It got bigger. They couldn't put it out. There's no way they could stop it. Praise God. Let's look at 2 Corinthians real quick. Chapter 6 and verse 14 through 16. Keep in mind, God, Holy Ghost. He's a spirit, a Holy Spirit. That makes him the Holy Ghost, a Holy Spirit. And he is a consuming fire. Think about that when we read this. Second Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? And what part has he that believes in an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. God the Holy Ghost. God the Consuming fire. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost in consuming fire. Think about that, praise God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I said, you got the Holy Ghost and fire in you. If you have God dwelling in you, ye are the temple of the living God. Praise God. 
And God had said, I will dwell in them. And I will walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Think about that. When you got baptized with the Holy Ghost, you got baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And it's living on the inside of you. Mm. Praise God. And he walks in you. Everywhere you go, you take him with you. Yeah. So be careful where you go. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. This is awesome. This is so powerful. Praise mm. God. This is so awesome. God, i.e. Jesus, poured out his spirit and fire on the day of Pentecost, and it's still burning. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 18, he asked Peter, Peter, who do you say I am? He said, well, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, and upon this rock, upon this rock, this truth, just as you're Peter and I am the Christ, upon this truth, or this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. I said there's no demon or no devil in hell that can ever overcome or put your fire out. Praise God. Ye are the temple of the living God. You are the church of the living God. And there's no devil in hell that can take your fire away from you. Praise God. That Holy Ghost away oh, from you. That's, right. that's God in you. You're full of God. Full of God. The Holy Ghost and fire. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he started his church in Acts on the day of Pentecost. Book of Acts, chapter 2. You can read it in verse 47 how he added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praise God. That means he built it. He told Peter, I will build my church upon this rock. That's right. And you don't hear much about it until after that. You see it. God added to the church on the day of Pentecost. Over there in Acts 2 and verse 47. He added to the church with the Holy Ghost and with fire. An experience of the Holy Ghost and with fire. And it cannot and will not go out until he comes and pulls his candlestick out of this planet earth. Praise God. I said it cannot and will not be quenched. Only Jesus can give it or take it away. No devil in hell can take your Holy Ghost or fire from you. Protect it. Keep praying up. Keep repenting when you have to repent. Keep on fire, praise God, for the Lord. And he, I'll, I'll let you know that he hasn't taken it away yet. Praise God. Do you want a burning bush experience. Praise God. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, real quick. We've been here millions of times. Praise God. It's so, I love it though. I love it. Can't get enough of it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. That's what we need to do when we come in the door. We need to be in one accord and in this one place. That's it. Praise God. And suddenly there came a sound of heaven from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. You feel the presence of God here tonight? Yes. yes. It filled all the house where you were sitting. Praise God. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. I want to read that one again. Some people missed it. They were busy. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. That's the Holy Ghost, folks. And it sat upon each of them. God consuming fire. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and fire gave them the utterance. Praise God. That's amazing. That is a burning bush experience in my book. Right. Praise yeah. God. How many of you want that experience again? Yes. Oh, yes. Praise God. You can get refilled. Yes. You drive to Connecticut from here, your car is empty, you can refill it. Praise God. Right. You get out there in the world and witness so much, you pour it out. As God gives it to you, you start to get empty, you can come to church, and you can get rebuilt again. Yes, God. hallelujah. There's no end to it. Let's look at Luke real quick. Chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Oh, I love this. I love it. Luke 3, 15. This was John the Baptist. He came along preaching repentance and baptism unto repentance. And he was baptizing people. And as the people were in expectation, like we are tonight, for God to move on us, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John stood up, or John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, that one mightier than I cometh, the latches of whose shoes I am not even worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He can't help it when he does it. God is the Holy Ghost and he's a consuming fire. When he comes into you, you get both. The Holy Ghost and fire, praise God. That's awesome. Such an awesome experience. And whose hand is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, which he does. When he comes in, he burns out all that trash in our life. Oh, hallelujah. Right by the roots. He burns the roots out. He just burns it right out of us. He's a consuming fire. The reason why we don't burn down, he's a holy fire. Just like the burning bush didn't burn up. Right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We don't burn up. Just what's inside of us burns up. It's filthy. It's dirty. Stuff we don't want in there. He purges it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I will gather the wheat into the garment. But the shaft, he will burn with fire. Unquenchable. It's, it's unquenchable. It's a holy fire that's unquenchable. No man can put it out. When God gives it, no man can put it out. The only ones that can put it out is me. You. People that have it, you get cold in your spirit. You get lazy in the spirit. You get cold. You fire just dwindles and windows until it just flickers. That's why Jesus wrote to the church over there in Revelation, all the churches. Tell them how he didn't want them to be just lukewarm. He'd rather have them be cold or on fire, but not lukewarm. Praise God. So keep the fire burning. Yes. Keep it burning. Praise God. Keep the fire burning. This was Jesus that was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's what John the Baptist preached. And he didn't lie. He, he spoke the truth. Let's look at Acts real quick. Verses 12 through 18. And they were all amazed. This is after they received the Holy Ghost and fire. Like as a fire, full of the tongues, like as a fire. And people were going about saying, Wow, these people are drunk. They're on new wine. But it was only nine o'clock in the morning. They were all amazed and were, they were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter stood up with the eleven, the other apostles as well, and he lifted up his voice. And he said unto them, Ye men of Judea, 
and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken, you better listen to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing that but the third hour of the day, that's nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel about 430 years before it took place. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I want you to, saith God, I want you to hear that, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Well, I thought Jesus was supposed to do it. Baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Here's God doing it. Saying he would. I would pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. So that makes God Jesus. He's doing the baptizing. And all my servants and all my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Praise God. That's awesome. Yes. That was Jesus. He said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That was God in the flesh. You can read it, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word became flesh in verse 14, and dwelt among us. That was Jesus. That was God manifested in the flesh, reconciling His people unto Himself. The only way He could do that was get rid of their sin. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do you really want to have a burning bush experience in the Lord? A Holy Ghost and fire experience that you'll never forget. Just how hungry and thirsty are you for God? You know, when John the Baptist was preaching, Jesus would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He weren't talking to just 12 apostles or disciples. It was more than the 12 that got it in the upper room. You can read Acts chapter 1, about 120 got it. They were all there. But John the Baptist was talking to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the surrounding region. He was talking to everybody that they could receive the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus would, would baptize them with the Holy Ghost and fire. But they just so happened there was only 120 in the upper room that got it in the beginning. And then later on, 3,000 got it. Praise God. And they were added to the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, got the Holy Ghost and fire. The Bible says those that hunger and thirst shall be filled. Filled with what? The Holy Ghost and fire. No. Matthew 5 and verse 6. Do we have that, Michael? No, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. We're talking they'll be filled. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, right. you will be filled. Let's look at Romans 14 and 17. Talks about righteousness. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. You have to hunger and thirst for righteousness and peace and joy. That's what the kingdom of God is. It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. So if you hunger and you thirst, he will fill you. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So seek after his righteousness. Do what is right. Praise God. I'm going to give you a testimony. I've only, I probably only told six or eight people about this, this experience. My burning bush experience, if you will. But my testimony. 
I was afraid to tell too many people, or just anybody, I was afraid they wouldn't believe me, they'd think I was a liar. So I was afraid to tell them. But you know what? It seems like the older you get, huh, Sister Joyce? You don't care what people think. <laughs> Praise God. And I don't care what people think. This is the truth. This is the absolute truth. I lie not. It was 43 years ago. It was October 4th, 1979. You do the math. And it was 3 or 3.30 in the morning. I don't quite have the time correct. I probably didn't even have a watch back then. I don't know. But I was Sergeant Hutch. I was in the military in Bull Hood, Texas. I was a buck sergeant. And I was going through a horrible divorce. You know, when, when you find out you're getting divorced and there's no hope, and you really love the one that wants to divorce you, you really hurt inside. It feels like somebody sticks a sword through your stomach or a dagger in your stomach. It really hurts if you really love them. And I love this woman with everything. And I had a son, praise God, with her. Married six years. I'm going to just say, I came home too early one day. Oh, no. Found her with another man. And that's all I'm going to say. And it hurt me so bad, I couldn't get that picture out of my, my brain. It was like branded, tattooed right on my brain, and it drove me half crazy, and I hurt so bad. That was up here in Maine. I had to go back to Texas. I was on leave 30 days or 10 days, whatever it was. I had to go back to Texas. So I had to go back. I went back to Texas without my wife and out without my son, and I was totally crushed. I started drinking from Maine to Texas. No, I didn't get drunk and drive. I stayed sober enough, but I, I made it to Texas, no problem. But when I got to Texas, that's all I did was drink, 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 trying to kill that pain and that sorrow and that hurt. I'd go to bed at night crying. And if I didn't drink enough booze during the day, I wouldn't be able to sleep. So I'd drink myself to sleep. I drank a case of beer a day. That's 24 cans of beer a day. Coors Light. I used to tell people in the jail ministry, if you ever go to Texas, don't try to buy any Coors, because I drank it all. <laughs> Praise God. Not just a case of beer a day, but I drank a fifth of wine with it. And if somebody would stop by with a bag of dope, you know, a bag of pot, I'd get stoned too. That was okay. And then finally, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'd pass out. Get up at 4.30, make four masons standing there, probably still half drunk, didn't care about nothing or nobody, make four masons, sneak off, put my men to work, like Christians. They'd go to work. I'd go to the PX, get a case of beer, get drunk again. This went on for, I don't know, a couple of months, a couple of months, I don't know how long it was, but I went from like 180 pounds down to 130. I didn't eat nothing, just drank, 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 drank. Got drunk, finally was able to go to sleep without thinking about that mess. Hurting so bad. Well, after a month or two or whatever it was, I get up one morning, get ready to go to work. I looked in the mirror. And I looked like walking death. I had black rings around my eyes. I looked like a raccoon. Black rings around my eyes. My cheekbones were pointed and sticking out. My chin was pointed. You could see all the bones in my face, my ribs. I looked like walking death. I almost scared myself when I looked in the mirror. And I looked and I said, Harry, if you don't stop this, it's going to kill you. And so I made up my mind that there, there's got to be a better life. There's got to be something better. 
or I'm going to die. I'm going to die if I keep this up. So I made up my mind. I'm not going to touch another drink. No pot, no nothing. I had a made up mind. And I didn't even, I didn't even go to church. Listen to this. I didn't even go to attend church. I really wasn't hungry or thirsty. But I was desperate. I was so desperate. I needed help so bad. I laid in bed about 3, 3.30 that morning after not drinking all day, not being able to go to sleep because I wasn't drunk out of my board. Laying there hurting, I said, I cried out. I don't know what made me do it, but I said, God, help me. Please, God, help me. I can't take this anymore. I was crying and hurting. And all of a sudden, I heard the sound of trumpets blow. There were several trumpets that blew. And they were in unison. They blew three times. I said, what is going on? I get out of my bed and I turn my light on and look out my house trailer window in Hacker Heights, Texas to see if there was a bunch of yahoos out there blowing trumpets. Trying to wake people up in the neighborhood, you know, at three in the morning or whatever it was, nobody there. So I laid back down, shut my light out, laid back down, and all of a sudden I felt my body sink down in my bed. It felt like I sunk down in my bed about a foot and a half. And all of a sudden a green cloud came out of my body. Yeah, big green cloud. It was probably about like five, six feet. Round, big green cloud, and it was like going to a cinema. It showed me everything I did wrong in life, even killing my two <coughs> sister's cat. I was horrible growing up as a kid. At the end of it, showed me all the things I did bad. It showed me why. I won't go there, but it showed me why I did all these stupid things. And all of a sudden, it was gone. The green cloud disappeared, and it felt like I come up off my bed, and I raised up off my bed about a foot and a half. And by this time, I was freaking out. I was going, what's going on? I turned around, I spun around, put my light back on, and I sit there on the edge of the bed, thinking and wondering. And after a minute or two, I said, that was Jesus. And when I said that was Jesus, my body lit up like a thousand watt light bulb. I glowed all over. And I kid you not, I glowed all over. And I never felt so good in all my life. The hurt was, it was like that knife came out of my gut. I felt so good. I weren't mad or angry anymore. I rolled over in bed, shut the light out, rolled over in bed, and I slept like a baby all night. The first thing I did that when I got up that next morning, I didn't have to go to work. I grabbed this great big home study Bible that I had. My mom bought it for my wife and I when we got married. And I started reading that, trying to find the answers. And I wrote 20 page letters home to my mom, telling her what had happened to me. And at least eight, 10 page letters to my sister, letting her know what happened to me. But you talk about a burning bush experience. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And I'll probably rehearse it on my deathbed. I'll probably tell the nurses about it on my deathbed. Praise God. God is real. And he's alive. Come on. Yes. If you cry out, if you get desperate, you get hungry and thirsty, he will help you. He will come and he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise God. But you've got to be hungry. You've got to be thirsty. How much of God do you want in your life tonight? You already got the Holy Ghost. You can have more. How much do you want of him? Praise God. 
I want another burning bush experience. I don't know about you. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Michael, did I give you John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39? I did. Praise God. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures, note that, note that. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. You see, he had to, he had to go to the cross, die, be buried, rose again, and glorified, before the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, over in Acts chapter 2. Praise God. Praise God. If you're hungry, if you're hungry tonight, and you're thirsty, praise God. He wants to fill you. He wants to give you more than you already have. So whosoever will come, empty yourself out of all the stuff that you know that is wrong. Tell Jesus you're sorry for your wrongs. And really, truly mean it. Tell Jesus you need him and want him. And that you will serve him and do his will whatsoever he wants of you to do. You will do it. And he will fill you with his Holy Ghost and with fire. I said he will baptize you just like the scriptures had said. John the Baptist had said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yes. Praise God. You, let's all stand. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Do you want a burning bush experience? Receiving the Holy Ghost and fire is a burning bush experience yes. in my book. That's pretty much what happened to me October 4, 1979, about 3 in the morning. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't know it. I was so ignorant. I didn't know one word of the Bible. I started doing what I had to do. I wrote my mom and told her I needed to be baptized. So she went and talked to a local Baptist preacher, pastor. He said, ah, oh, don't let him wait till he comes home and get baptized. Tell him to go somewhere down there in Texas and get himself baptized. Don't wait. So I started pursuing. And that's where my journey started 43 years ago until God led me by here one day and led me in that door, in that building across the way. And I received the Holy Ghost, a refreshing, a refilling, and I got a good, praise God. I got it at a camp meeting, like an hour and all. And I got baptized in that precious name of Jesus Christ, just the way the Bible says to do it. And I had all my sins washed away. It's such an experience. An experience you'll never forget. Praise God. This altar is open. This altar is always open. You come tomorrow night and pray. I mean, Monday night. I feel like today is Sunday. Come Monday night. Continue to get filled up. Yeah. Not fire for God. People will see it in you. And they'll want what you got. Man, I don't know what you got, but oh, I'd like to have some of that. 
That's the way you should look when you walk out, walk through the doors of Walmart. People look at you like, you know, you got this big smile on your face. Look so peaceful. That's the anointing and the glory of God on you. I remember when, I, when that first happened to me in 1979, when people would mention the name of Jesus. When I heard the name of Jesus, my whole body would just glow with the radiance of the glory of God. I would just glow. I never thought in all my life. Praise God. Come, if you will. This altar is open. Let's spend just a few minutes, if nothing else, with God. He wants to touch you tonight. That's why you're here. Praise God. He wants to bless you. He loves you. He loves his children. He's in you. He walks in you. That's the Holy Ghost and fire. Consuming fire, God Himself is in you. If you have the Holy Ghost, get a refreshing. Praise God. Even if you have to find a, a small hole in a tree somewhere, a big tree, pray until you get refreshed, refilled. Get another good, strong experience. Praise God. And get the Word in you. So you can stand firm in these days.